Content warning. This is a horror game, and it is not intended for all audience. Please visit our website, blacktabbygames.com, if you need a full list of content warnings. Slay the Princess contains flickering images. Flickering image effects as well as parallax effect that on rare occasions has caused motion sickness in players. If either of these health issues for you, you can disable them in the game's preference. Heck yeah I am! Whatever hordes you may find in these dark spaces have heart and see them through. There are no premature endings. There are no wrong decisions. There are only fresh perspectives and new beginnings. This is a love story. <laughs> Alright. I'm <laughs> sorry, y'all. I'm just so excited. If the effects make me nauseous or anything, or you guys nauseous, well, it doesn't matter because I really don't read comments. <laughs> Alright, we're going into um, Slay the Princess blindly, and we are gonna have a fun adventure. I know nothing about the game other than we have to save this princess, and a lot of things await for us. And I'm excited. I love these uh, choices matter kind of games lately. Like per per se, what I've been playing a lot is uh, The Walking Dead. That game is amazing. All right, enough chitty chat. Let's get it. All right, new game. Let's go. Chapter one: The Hero and the Princess. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. Okay. Ooh, we can move. Okay. Now we can save. Um, save. Quick save complete. That's nice. Okay. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Oh, end of the world if we don't slay her. That's simple, right? Okay, what options do we have? Explore the end of the world. What are you talking about? Have you considered that maybe the only reason she's going to end the world is because she's locked up? Explore killing a princess seems kind of bad though, isn't it? Can't some... Whoa, there's a lot of choices. Can't someone else do it? Forget it. I'm not doing this. Have you considered that maybe I'm okay with the world ending? Do I get some sort of reward for doing this? I mean, our lives. Hey. Oh, okay, thanks for telling me what to do. Sweet, I've always wanted it off. Monarch, viva la revolution. All right. No wrong turn, huh? What are you talking I'm about? I'm talking about the end of everything as we know it. No more birds, no more trees, and perhaps most problematically of all, no more people. You have to put an end to her. All right. Say less. She's an issue. Alright. Yeah, that's true, right? But how can a princess locked away in a basement end the world? Don't linger on the specifics. You have a job to do here. Just get in there and do what needs to be done. We're all counting on you. You know, I have trust issues with that narrator already. It's not really telling me the details of why we need to take care of this princess, you know. Do you have any evidence to back this up? Look, you're already on the path that leads to the cabin. Why would you be here if it weren't to complete a very important task? You've made it this far, you might as well reach the end of your journey. Okay. Alright. Hmm. Have you considered that maybe the only reason She's going to end the world as because she's locked up. Won't let me out, got locked up. Won't let me out, no. Won't let While me I appreciate out. the mental exercise, we are running up against a bit of a ticking clock. All right. Nevertheless, let me assure you, the princess is locked up because she's dangerous. She is not dangerous because she's locked up. Uh, wait, what? The princess is locked up because she's dangerous. She's not dangerous because she's locked up. Huh? But she's locked up because she's dangerous. 
I, and before you decide to waste even more of our time by asking how I know that, let me suggest a more pragmatic lens through which to view this situation. I tell me. Causality doesn't matter here, because the end result is the same no matter what led us up to this point. If the princess leaves the cabin, the world will end, and there is no changing that. It's right. no use arguing semantics over a metaphorical chicken or egg, because the egg is hatched and it's about to ruin everything. Well, that's a strong argument. Unless, of course, you do your job and slay her. Why can't you do it, narrator? You seem to know the whole details of her. What do I gotta do it, huh? Alright. Hmm. Alright. Look, I'll go to the cabin and I'll talk to her. If she's bad as you say she is, then maybe I'll slay her. But I am not committing to anything until I have had the chance to meet her face to face. Alright? You're guilty till charged. Or charged till guilty. Either one. Whatever. You and your riddles got me here. Then I guess we'll just have to see what happens. But, a word of warning. If you go in prepared to hear her out, she could easily trap you in her web of lies. Mm -hmm. And the more you listen to her honeyed words, the harder it'll be to pull yourself out. We'll find out, won't we? I'm a pretty good people teller. I can tell if someone's bow crapping or not. Then each and every one of us is doomed. We'll find out. So sure, go talk to her. See how that turns out for all of us. All right, narrator. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. Hmm. Looks pretty cozy. We're not going to go through with this, right? She's a princess. We're supposed to save princesses, not slay them. Maybe. Nah. Let's quick save real quick. Ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Okay, so this is third person, okay? Proceed into the cabin. Alright. I really the interior like of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture of note is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. Alright. I really like the graphics, I'm just saying. Like, look at the background. You see all the stars, the artwork is amazing. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Alright, let's get it. Um, let's take the basement. You take the blade from I the mean, table. Take the blade. It'd be rather difficult to slay the princess and save the world without it. Alright, all it takes is a blade? Sure. Let's enter the basement. Let's see what she's all about. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. That's true. She needs to, like, uh, we need to end her misery. Humanely. Her voice carries up the stairs. What's she sound like? If she sounds annoying, I'm I'm taking care of her. <laughs> Who's there? Okay, she's not she doesn't sound that bad. Um She sounds dangerous. It's almost as if she's the one in charge down here. Yeah, she doesn't sound scared at all. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. Alright. Um hmm. Let's continue down the stairs. Good. You're still listening to reason. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. Lock eyes. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. It's just one arm, though. She's so coldly beautiful. Is she really a threat to the world? Well... Yeah, probably. Focus on the task at hand. All right. And there you are. Are you here to kill me or something? Um, uh, yeah. Hmm. 
I haven't decided yet. Let's let's steal our nerves. Let's step forward. You step forward, your grip on the blade tightening as you steal your resolve. Uh huh. Oh, no talking then. Fine. What even makes you think you can kill me? Whoa, somebody sounds very confident that I cannot do this. I'm probably chained up in this basement for a reason, right? And if that knife is the only weapon you have, you'll have to get close enough to use it. Alright. So, you should just drop it. Best not to risk finding out what I can do. Okay. She's unarmed. If you hesitate now, it'll be too late. End this. So, what if we just kill her and the game ends? That's it? No way. No way. Huh. I'm sorry. Can we just talk? You're so close. Don't give up. You've come this far. Alright, screw it. No, this is a good idea. Maybe we can de-escalate things. Maybe we can trick her into thinking we love her and then RAM! She just got catfished by me. <laughs> Alright, let's oh, just... Oh, threatened are we? You poor thing. Drop the knife and of course we can talk. Alright. She sounds pretty evil, I'm not gonna lie. Hmm. I'm scared. Let's drop the blade. <sighs> the blade tumbles out of your trembling hands and drops to the floor with an unceremonious clang. The narrator literally just sighed at me. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe now we can just talk. Okay. Let's talk. Against your better judgment, you step forward to speak with the princess face to face. Unarmed. So is she. Alright, let's save. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. I don't know what you're hoping to accomplish here, but I can assure you there's no reasoning with her. <sighs> Just make sure you don't forget about the blade on the floor. You're going to need it. Alright. She does look pretty creepy, I'm not gonna lie, with those big ol' eyes. <laughs> so here we are. What an awkward start to a relationship. We don't have a relationship. Sorry. <sighs> Alright. Let's see. Let's see. What can an option? What's your name first? She hesitates before answering. Hmm. You can address me as your royal highness, or her majesty. Any honorific should do, really. Wow. Someone's a brat. Note the lack of detail. You can't trust her. I don't. Maybe she doesn't trust me neither. Alright. How long have you been down here? Too long. Hmm. That was a stupid Again, question. she offers no specifics. No matter how hard you try, you'll never get a straight answer out of her. Well, let's keep interrogating her, alright? I'm here because you're supposed to end the world. Don't just tell her that. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, narrator. That's cute. Do you believe that? Do you think I'm some sort of... <laughs> monster? Yeah, with that eye, you're not seducing me whatsoever, Princess Royal Highness. If I'm supposed to be capable of ending the world, then how did I wind up here, <clears throat> chained to a wall? Have they told you why I'm allegedly so... dangerous? Alright, I'm a terrible interrogator. <laughs> um, what are you going to do if I let you out of here? princess hesitates before responding. Ah. She doesn't know. She's been down here too long to have any idea of what she'd do in another life. Hmm. Suspicious. She knows what she'd do. She's just searching for whatever answer she thinks you want to hear. 
I don't think I can answer that question in a way you'd find meaningful. Hmm. Interesting. At the end of the day, whatever the two of us have going on down here is about trust. Yeah? Whoever sent you to slay me claimed I was a threat to the world, but they didn't tell you why. Right? Both of y'all don't tell me why. I need to know why. That doesn't sound right to me. And I don't think it sounds right to you, either. Otherwise, we'd be killing each other instead of talking. Mm-hmm. She has a point. There's a reason I've been telling you to question the situation, and there's a reason you've listened. So, I could tell you that I'd lead a quiet life in the woods, or that I'd open an orphanage, or that I'd do any other number of good things that I'm sure you think you want to hear. You're right. But you don't really know me, do you? What can my word possibly be worth in a situation like this? You write again. She's right about one thing. Her word isn't worth anything. Like I said, it's all about trust. Blind trust. Ooh, I don't know. I don't like blind trust. So do you trust me, the prisoner, the victim, the princess clearly incapable of ending the world? Or do you trust whoever put me here? Neither. She's wrong. This isn't about trust. This is about risk. We stand to lose everything. All for the sake of one person. And a subjugating monarch, no less. Alright. Okay, we've talked enough. Oh? Have you decided what to do with me? Yep. I am gonna get rid of you. You know and move why on. you're here. I do. Alright, let's slay the princess. Let's just take care of the business and let's move on, alright? I got a lot of things to do. You charge the princess, blade trembling in your hand, but you've already lost the battle. What? How? She casually sidesteps your thrust before knocking you to the ground with a single blow from her elbow. Oh, crap. We shouldn't have hesitated. Well, we did. But she doesn't stop there. She kicks you a few times for good measure, the pointed tip of her shoes feeling like a pickaxe against your fracturing bones, making sure you stay down. All right. As you lie, crushed and broken on the basement floor, the princess kneels on your throat with the kind of weight you didn't think her slight frame could possibly possess. As you gasp for air, she eyes you with an intense curiosity. You shouldn't have let that fear creep into your heart. You had the upper hand, and now look at you. Oh, gosh, dang it. Is this really the best you could do? Look at you, completely broken. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little disappointed. Yeah, you're too strong. She applies more pressure, slowly squeezing what's left of your life out of your lungs. Well, I guess I'm dead, guys. This is the end, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I'm afraid it is. Well. Everything goes dark, and you die. All right. The end? Oh. Chapter 2. The Tower. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin, and in the basement of that cabin is a princess. What the heck is going on? You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Okay. Oh my god, what a twist. I'm getting a terrible sense of deja vu. A terrible sense of deja vu? No, you don't have that. This is the first time either of us have been here. Okay. If he doesn't okay. remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. Oh, I remember. You know I can hear you, right? It's going to be a lot harder than you think to keep secrets from me. What does it matter what he knows? There's nothing we can do to stop her. She's just going to kill us again. Hmm. She is not going to kill you unless you let her. But slaying the princess and saving the world is going to be much more difficult than it has to be if you spend the whole time second-guessing yourself. That's true. I did hesitate at first. 
Alright. Alright, let's proceed to the cabin. A warning before you go any further. Alright. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. We might as well just pledge ourselves to her and stop pretending we're capable of doing anything in this situation. She probably doesn't even need to try to overpower us. Hmm. Pledge ourselves and stop pretending that we're capable of doing anything in this situation. Huh. Can we tone down the pessimism just a smidge? I'm not being a pessimist. I'm just being realistic. Voice of the broken, voice of the hero. So we got like two voices going You're on. You're being annoying. Just ignore their bickering and whatever you do, don't pledge yourself to her. I cannot stress enough how absolutely catastrophic that would be for everyone. Yourself included. Alright. I agree. If she's wrongfully imprisoned, then we should rescue her, but if he's telling the truth, we shouldn't just hand her the world on a silver platter. Mm -hmm. Rescue her? Given the stakes of the situation, there isn't really a difference between rescuing her and pledging yourself to her. Either would be terrible. Alright. So please, try to ignore both of those knuckleheads and focus on saving the world. Let's not make this harder than it has to be. Okay, let's if proceed. that's what you want, I guess I don't have a say here. I wonder if she's going to... The interior Whoa. of the cabin is larger and more grandiose than its humble exterior would suggest. The only furniture of note is a massive marble altar with a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. All right, let's grab it. Why do we feel so small? Yeah, we do feel pretty we small. We don't feel here. small. We are small. Yeah. Ugh. All right. Take the blade. You take the blade from the altar. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. All right. Let's enter the basement. <clears throat> I don't know what that mirror is about. Maybe I should have checked it out. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a spiral staircase. It steps almost as deep as you are tall. The smell of incense drifts up from below. For a moment, you almost feel at ease. Yeah. Oh, this is actually kind of nice. But it's still a stone basement. If the princess lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. A booming voice rolls up the stairs. Is that a guest I hear? Don't linger on the stairs. Come down and witness me. She sounds possessed. You weren't kidding when you said it was booming. She wasn't like this last time. No, she was not. We need to get down there. She wants us to see her. We need to see her. Alright. Should we be worried about your sudden change in attitude? Just a few minutes ago, you were going on about how pointless everything was. Now you want to go down there. That's weird, right? It doesn't matter what that little voice says. He's not the one making the decisions. Though if his ramblings get you to the princess, they get you to the princess. Continue down the stairs. Let's go. Making your way down the spiral staircase is a time-consuming and exhausting effort, every step requiring you to clamber over one edge before dropping to the next. But soon the end comes into view, and you tumble to the bottom, entering the vast, temple-like room beyond. The princess towers over you, what the heck? almost glowing in the weak starlight, her figure framed by a stained glass window. Her long hair billows around her, and a chain binds her wrist to the far wall. The chain is nothing to her. It might as well be a toy for all the good it would do. I told you, it was pointless to resist her. The little bird has returned to me. I wonder what he wants. Why are you hovering? You've brought that knife again. 
Even though you know. Oops. Alright. Return. Even though you know it's useless, such charming audacity. Drop it. Ah. Alright, we're not dropping it this time. Tighten your As grip. If on command, the blade slips from your grasp. What? It clatters uselessly to the floor. What the heck? But we didn't drop it. We decided to grip it tighter, remember? Are you really just gonna let that happen to us? I have a duty to report facts as facts, and the fact is that you dropped the blade. Oh my gosh. Of course we dropped it. She's so much more than us. You wouldn't understand what it feels like to be in her presence. I don't know oh, about I that. I understand what's going on, and you'd better snap yourself out of it. Yeah, we do. Neil. Oh, why? No. Oh, are you still trying to defy me? I said Neil. Oh. Your legs buckle, and your knees hit the floor. Holy crap. That's my good little She's bird. a Jedi. No. Why don't we talk? Why do we need to talk? The last time we met, you told me I was destined to end the world. That thought wrapped itself around my heart. It has pulled at me since the moment I squeezed the life out of your broken lungs. I could feel its fundamental truth awaken me. Mm -hmm. The collapse of the old is a necessary prelude to the birth of the new. And the world as it is now is overdue for... Alterations. It's time for me to seize my destiny. And you, little bird, will help me seize it. Okay. Well, that gives away the game, doesn't it? It certainly does. And beyond that, it more than lends credence to our conversation in the woods. I don't love the thought that in some other reality you failed to destroy her, but what's done is done. I can only hope it helped you learn a valuable lesson. Yeah, in a way. You are the only one who can deal with her. And if you don't... Well, <coughs> she's let you know what will happen, hasn't she? And you yep. shouldn't have trusted us with her destruction. She is inevitable. Can't you feel it? He's being melodramatic, but he's not exactly wrong, is he? What are we supposed to do to stop her? Yeah, what are we supposed to do? <sighs> okay. First things first, you're going to have to stuff those pessimistic thoughts someplace far, far away and commit yourself to what needs to be done. Uh, the stakes of the situation should be perfectly clear to everyone now. And if you're going to save the world, you have to have faith that you can pull this off. You can't win a battle that you've already lost in your mind. That's true. You can't. <sighs> All right. What happened to you after I died? Know the limits of your privilege, little bird. Ho ho ho, alright. There is an empty place at my side for you to fill, if you'll have it. But it is not a place for an equal. It is a place for something worthy to be kept. A priest, perhaps. Or a pet. Oh shoot, I do not want to be your pet. I'm just saying. Alright. Alright, uh, just because you're supposed to end the world doesn't mean you actually have to do it. You can be whatever you want to be. This isn't about desire. This is about what I am. Huh. And I have little interest in discussing destiny with one that cannot see the divine truth that shines in my heart. You have a heart. Good to know. Hmm. Hmm, we cannot pledge ourselves to her. What would you have me do? What do you have planned? All you have to do is break these chains and set me free. Nope, I am not. We must resist. If you're so powerful, can't you just break the chains yourself? Don't be rude. Of course she can. 
It's not rude to question someone who's apparently trying to end the world. Yeah. If she's that strong, she could break the chain and just end the world if she really wanted to, right? That's exactly why it's rude. We should know our place. Not me. <laughs> I can. Easily. But that isn't what I want to do. Why not? The story of a terrible and bountiful god unbounded of her own will is no story at all. It's not worthy of everything I am or everything I'm bound to become. It isn't even worthy of what I was. Hmm. Interesting. The destruction in Genesis that's to follow in my wake is deserving of a song that can echo for eternity. The song of you being so struck by my glory, so overwhelmed by what I am, that you feel you must deliver me into the world. And from your act of utter devotion and submission, Springs a new dawn. A better dawn. A better dawn. Submit now. Submit later. It makes no difference. Because in the end, no matter how vainly you struggle against me, my will triumphs over yours. Wow. I'm not going to help you end the world. I don't care if something new comes after. I just can't let you do that. I say... Let's resist. Perhaps you need another lesson in submitting to your betters. The heck? Pick up that needle. Does it needle? Do it. It's what she wants. I don't really like the voice of the broken. No objections here. What? You're not... You're not agreeing with me for the first time, narrator? I don't know what she's planning, and I don't like that we don't know what she's planning, but... We might as well pick up the blade. Okay, I guess you guys are... As your eye falls on the blade, you feel a weight. Some divine hand that sits unperceived by your senses, but then manages to push you towards its desires like an unseen puppeteer. Oh gosh, she already has a string on us. Okay. Looks like we have no choice. Can't do anything else. You reach forward and grasp the blade. Stand! Oh gosh. This one's easy. See? This isn't so bad. It's gonna be bad. Okay, yeah. We can do that. We were probably gonna stand anyway. Yeah, and then die. You can feel a creaking tension between body and will as you slowly rise to your feet, like two foes forced into an unhappy truce. The princess eyes you with soft contemplation. The moment seems to last a lifetime, the silent anticipation of what's to come dragging out the long, painful seconds. But all silences are broken eventually. To define me is to claim we stand on level ground. We do not. You are quiet, Shadow. While I am brilliant radiance. Take that knife in your hand and slit your throat. What? I ain't gonna do that crap. What? You don't have to listen to her. You're armed. Just steal your nerves, step forward, and end this. Alright, let's do it. Oh shoot, let's end this. Oh, we'll end this alright. That's the only option I had. Your hand lifts the blade and brings it towards your throat. Okay, I apologize for the unclear language. End her. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's slay the princess. Your body is sluggish and unresponsive, actively fighting against you, but you do your best to stagger forward. One step at a time, you move towards the princess. Slitting your throat would have been a mercy, but it seems you're in need of a harsher lesson. What? A harsher lesson? Plunge that knife into your lungs. Uh, no way. I'm sorry. What? Don't. Oh! As you take another step forward, the blade digs into your ribs, what the? slicing through flesh with ease. 
it somehow feels like an entirely natural thing to do, while the simple act of walking has become an arduous impossibility. Then it slides back out, the wound burning as a small hiss of air escapes through the fresh orifice. Blood fills your lungs. That must be painful. Now, do it again. Keep doing it until I give you permission to stop. No! Those are just words. You don't have to listen to her. It's what she wants. You, heroic one, what are you doing? Don't just let this happen. Stop him from killing you. I'm yeah. On. Your other hand locks around your wrist, struggling to keep it from perforating vital organs. But the blade still flails towards oh my you, gosh. managing to slice bits of skin that plop to the floor to join the growing pile of blood and gore beneath you. Despite the pain, you manage to keep yourself in one piece, at least for now. What a pitiful display. A wounded little bird, thinking it can defy a god. You're a god, eh? It doesn't have to be like this. It doesn't have to hurt so much. You can choose a gentle end. You can choose to leave that punctured vessel for the next. Oh. You, you all can hear me stabbing myself. Like, just repeatedly. Like, that has to be super painful. Alright, slay the princess. Let's or do it. You can pathetically struggle against yourself until the floor of this temple is painted with the bloody impressions of your futility. Oh my gosh. You continue to approach the princess, even as the repeated gouges of your blade expose bone and muscle to the open air of the basement. You know, this would be a lot easier if you gave us a hand. My influence only goes so far, and I can only juggle so many things at once. The best I can do right now is to continue to drive you forward. Believe me, this whole ordeal would be so much easier if I didn't have to contend with free will. That's true. You're the one making things difficult. You're the one making us hurt. She doesn't want to hurt us. She's just doing what she has to. No, 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 no. She Stop. wants to. Stop now. As you finish crossing the room, you fall to your knees at the princess's feet, your chest heaving as your blood pools in the crevices of the stone floor, the coppery taste coating your throat. The coppery taste. The princess mm, kneels yummy down. Yummy blood. Lifting your chin with her finger as her face lowers to yours. Alright, save real quick. Your devotion is misplaced. You've surrendered to delusion. But something about your defiant spirit speaks to me. You are different than you were before. Yeah, I got trust issues with you. Perhaps, if you've learned your lesson, I can spare you from the release of death. That's a little demeaning, isn't it? Yes, it is. how thoughtful of her. It's a mercy. <laughs> Take it. No. I think he's given up whatever say he had at the start of all this. At least one of you is sane. She's within striking distance and she's only negotiating now because she knows you have what it takes to put an end to her. Seize the moment before it's too late. Alright, let's slay the princess. <gasps> why, why are you saying no, voice of the broken? Yes, though your body trembles, struggling to defend itself in the face of the princess's overwhelming will, you finally manage to break through, darting to her side before she can react. Ooh. The wind of your freedom rushes through you, and you Eat channel some. it into a decisive blow, stabbing into the soft flesh of her ankle and severing the tendons in an act of unyielding defiance. Ooh, she yeah. falls to the floor, crashing unceremoniously to her knees. Yeah. But you don't give her any Ooh. time to recover. Your heart pounding with determination, you plunge your blade into her chest. As you find oh your my target gosh. again and again, she laughs, crude emotion breaking through her once stony composure <laughs> as your blade cuts her flesh. What the heck? We can do this, can't we? You always could. The decision to give you this task was not made lightly. 
You're here for a reason. It's not too late to pick up the pieces. It's not too late to toss that blade aside and beg for forgiveness. No. Shut up. Yeah. I'm trying to I end my business. I can't believe you would actually strike me. Oof. You. <laughs> you hid. You were. You defiled her. You don't know the consequences of your arrogance. What is my consequence? <laughs> yeah. Before oh. you can strike the final blow, the princess lashes out, knocking you off your feet. There's an unsettling Ooh. wet pop as your spine breaks. Ouch. Numbness and pain spreading through your body. As you rebound towards the ceiling in a moment of disorientated lightness, she drives her fist into your chest. Well, I guess I'm dead again. Your body is crushed as she pulverizes you into the floor, the ground itself breaking from the impact. You lie there, broken, beyond pain, unable to even see what she's done to you. But the princess is succumbing to her own wounds as well. She looks down upon her body in abject horror and disgust. Yeah. That's you made you me use my hands. Uh -huh. I, I can feel myself twisting into something new. Something dull, something defiled. What have you done to me? Oh, uh, you know, just stab you a couple times, that's it. monsters and conspirators. I can't bear to watch this. Ugh. The princess has been nothing but cruel to you. You should feel liberated by her fall. Yeah. I don't feel liberated. I feel empty. I feel pretty liberated. Aside from the pain, I feel fine. Yep, uh huh. Alright. She collapses to the floor. Her glassy <laughs> eyes watch, unblinking, yet somehow still full of anguish and fear as the two of you perish together. Oh, we perish together? I suppose we were never gonna get a happy ending here, were we? Oh uh, yeah, probably not. Sorry about that. All right, no happy ending. Don't I let get those it. be your final thoughts. You saved the world. That's worth something. Yes, yeah, she was definitely a threat. I tell you that. I guess. What? Oh, I thought that was a narrator. Regardless of how you feel about it, it's finally over. Thank you. Everything goes dark, and you die. Oh, nice. So, I saved the world, and I died. The end. Uh-oh. Chapter 3. The Furry. Oh, shoot. You're on a path in the woods. And at the end of the path... Okay, what the hell is that? <laughs> oh, yeah, what... Is this hell? I think he's upset. Uh, yeah. What's he got to be upset about? We just killed a god! <laughs> exactly. You heathens destroyed the most beautiful thing that ever was. And ever will be. <gasps> Wait, did we just kill the god and then the whole world just turned to crap? You're damn right we did. You'll get over. I can't say I have much sympathy for you. She was bad for us, and you almost got us killed. Hmm, it's three voices now. You're being too generous. He did get us killed. All right, enough chatter. I've got a thing I'm supposed to do, and if you don't mind, I'd like to do it without any more interruptions. Okay, great, you're listening. <clears throat> you're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a... If your thing is telling us about the princess, don't waste your breath. We know all about her. It's hardly a path in the woods at this point, is it? Mm -hmm. This is just great. <sighs> Let me cut to the chase. Clearly, you've already been here. Yeah. Yeah, you think? Uh, actually, uh, I don't think we have been here. This is all different. It's very different. Yes, precisely. And if you'd given me two seconds to finish my thought, I would have said that. Oh, you're actually letting me talk now. Great. If you've already been here, it means you've seen things you aren't supposed to have seen, and you know things that you aren't supposed to know. This doesn't look like a path in the woods, if reality seems... distorted. It's because reality is distorted. So you knew this could happen? You knew we'd be able to... restart like this? I know all sorts of things, which is why you should listen to me. That's okay. not really an answer. <sighs> look, if the world around you is changing, especially all the way out here, and that means you're nearing the point of no return. Whatever happens next, that's it. There won't be any more do-overs. 
so you'd better take things seriously. Uh, I have been, narrator. Alright. You said yourself that you know more than you're letting on. If you want me to go to the cabin, then you better tell us everything. I can't. Anything I say at this point is far more likely to accelerate the unraveling of this place than it is to actually help you do your job. In All right. fact, I probably shouldn't have even said that. I trust that if you've been here before, it means you know how dangerous she is, and that you know I'm not lying to you about her. Really? That's it. That's all we're getting out of you. Like, honestly, we killed her. He just wants to keep things going the way they are. But we've been given a second chance to do right by her. She can build something better than this. She can build something better than us. We just have to let her do it. Huh. I get it. You're conflicted. You've been through a lot, but I really have to be firm here. I will tell you one thing, which is that even now, you are capable of stopping her and saving the world from ruin. You always have been, and you always will be. Do with that what you will. Huh. Alright. It feels like I'm being pulled in a hundred different directions. You better all listen to me when the time comes to make a choice. Hmm. So what if I'm speaking my mind? It's not like I've ever really gotten a say in things. I mean, you did, boys of the broken. What a crock of shit. <laughs> yeah, you stabbed us last time. Repeatedly. It didn't even work. It doesn't count. Oh, we gosh. died. If you didn't submit to her, for all we know, that wouldn't have happened. It's the punishment you all deserved for not listening to me. To huh. Aside from our sulking friend, I don't think we have much to worry about. You're still the one in charge here, and I don't think that's ever going to change. The second he tries something, I'll put a stop to it. Who are you talking to, stubborn me? Alright. Alright, no matter what happens next, it seems like our answers are at the cabin. We might as well see this through. Let's proceed. Good, we're all on the same page. It isn't long before you find yourself at the end of the path, staring up at the cabin on the hill. You'll find the princess within, as I'm sure you already know. End her. That's it? No final words of advice? <laughs> I'd rather not waste any more time. I'm sure that any advice I'd give at this point is something you've already heard. If there's still a princess at the cabin, maybe we can salvage things. Maybe if we just grovel and apologize, things can go back to how they were before. Yeah, but then I think everything is an illusion. Oh, cut it out, will you? We need to be tough right now, and you're making it so much harder than it has to be. So stop whining. All right, let's proceed. The interior of the cabin is a place that feels long forgotten. There was once an elegance to its construction, Carved marble columns holding a high arched roof, vaulted windows letting in the weak starlight. Yeah, everything is uh, pretty gross looking. But that is how it was. Now there is a growth that has overtaken it. A viscous fluid seeps from cracks in the stone walls, and it congeals into chaotic streaks of writhing nerves and wet clumps of living meat. That's horrible. You did this. Yeah. Any furniture of note? is a pulsating pedestal, a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. It's interesting how the knife always ends up next to a cabin. Right. It's that mirror again, and this time it's blocking the door. A mirror? There is no mirror. There's the pedestal, the blade sitting on the pedestal, and the door to the basement. Wait, you don't see the mirror? Just tell us where the door is. I'd like to get back to fighting, and if you want us to kill her so bad, I'm sure you feel the same. No more messing around. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. There isn't a mirror because I wouldn't know if there was a mirror. You're either seeing things, or you're confused on the definitions of door and mirror. Or you're seeing things. That seems far more likely. Huh. He's not telling me something. What are you trying to say? Exactly. He thinks we're that we're succumbing to madness, that something in us has 
broken. That's an unnecessarily melodramatic way to describe a hallucination, but sure, I'm not going to waste time arguing with any of you. Whoa. It's in our way. Let's just smash it. Hmm. Let's take the blade. You take the blade from the pedestal. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world. Good. Nothing feels better than gripping cold steel. All right, let's approach the mirror now. You step forward and approach the door to the basement, hesitating before you open it. As if you don't see it. You really don't, do you? How strange. It's a bit grimy. Why don't we wipe it clean? What? Wipe what clean? Are you still on about that mirror? It's not real. I'd know about it if it were real. No, we can't doubt our eyes like that. It has to be real. Yeah, it does have to be real. Smash it. Smash it to pieces. It's the only thing keeping us from her. Don't you want to know what we'll see in there? We won't be able to see anything if we smash it. Nah, I'm with him on this one. Smash it. Let's get violent already. <laughs> Do whatever you want with it. The mirror isn't real, so how you handle it doesn't matter, aside from wasting dangerous amounts of time. Let's wipe the mirror clean. I want to know what it's about. You reach forward and drag your hand across the door leading to the basement. As if on command, it slowly slides open, scraping against the stone floor, its ancient hinges moaning as it reveals the dim path ahead. Why am I not surprised? You step forward into the darkness. The stairs leading Whoa. down to the basement are at once both narrow and grandiose. The high vaulted ceiling stretches up into a gloom beyond your sight, while walls wet with tumorous growths press in uncomfortably at your sides. You feel both unprotected and trapped, at once exposed and claustrophobic. The air is thick, its odor an oppressive violence. The metallic scent of fresh blood twisting with the nauseating embers of charred remains. If the princess lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Maybe. Her voice, a bellowing rage, roars up the stairs. Let's see what she sounds like now. Was severing the tendons of my ascension not enough for you? Was it not enough to rend my divine heart? Yeah, I did Come stab you. Come see the horrors you've wrought upon my flesh, and feel my hands set upon your throat. Whoa. She's so angry. Aggressive. Why? Why did you desecrate her? Why couldn't I stop you? Because you're a pansy, and I don't like pansies. You've got to stop thinking about her like that. It isn't doing anyone any good. Yeah, it isn't. She's not some untouchable god. She's an abomination. And we're going to put an end to her once and for all. Let's do it. Whatever she is now, it's our fault. If she is an abomination, then what does that make us? Another abomination. She was gonna end the world last time. Yeah. If I might interject, you didn't make her into an abomination. She's always been what she is. It's why you're here. And it's why your task is so important. I get it. Continue down the stairs, let's go. You make your way to the bottom of the stairs. Uh-huh. The chamber's Whoa. walls are painted in blood. A deep, sickening red that drips down in clotted streams onto the charred corpses that make up its floor. This place reeks of torment, of ripped skin and burning bone. This is like a pretty, uh, demonic. The princess stands in its center, muscles flayed and bare and weeping, draped in a tattered dress of her own skin. Her heart beats from its place in her open chest. Do you know what I'm going to do to you? What are you going to do? You can't get out of that chain. <laughs> There's not oh. so much a moment of hesitation before she steps forward. Her chains pull taut, holding fast as she strains against them. The cuff around her wrist digs deeper into her skin. Blood drips from the place where metal meets flesh. Yikes. She's mad then, at me. With a nauseating sound, the skin tears. It plops to the ground she pulls her red, glistening arm free from her bindings. She is well. loose, and she is coming for you. Hmm, I guess that chain wasn't the best to hold her down after, all right? Let her end it. It's the punishment you all deserve for what you did to her. 
It's the punishment I deserve for letting it happen. Oh, shut up, boys of the broken. Screw that. We can win. We've done it before and we'll do it again. Only this time we'll make it out the other side. Hell, she's practically done most of the work for us. Yeah, pretty much. All right. I'm going to end you. Nah. Let's slay the princess without Your saying anything. Fear. You charge towards the princess. Your eyes locked on each other. Both of you prepared to lay down your very essence in one blow. It's now or never. Let's make it a beautiful blaze of glory. The horrifying Ooh. You are unwound. What the freak? I hope you weren't planning on dying. We're going to make this last forever. Oh, I feel cold. I've never felt cold before. Okay. We have hit the one hour mark. And if you all are enjoying this, go give me a thumbs up, subscribe, follow me, kick, twitch, whatever I'm on right now. And I shall see you in the next one. So, I shall see you tomorrow maybe all right we are getting somewhere now so i'll see you then can you come through